Alright, so we're in the calf barn here. Uh, as you can see, and I got a little project that I'm gonna work on. So, whenever a calf is born, we always give them two bottles of colostrum. The problem that we see is the colostrum is always not as warm as we'd want, and Gerhardt. He's in school right now at SUNY Cobleskill and one of the classes he's in was talking about calves and stuff and saying how important it is to feed your calves colostrum at the right temperature otherwise it can cause problems right away. So we've talked about it before and he's seen how other farms kind of solve that problem that he went and toured. So I'm gonna kind of do the same thing a little different with what we have to make it easy. So this right here is just a water heater, uh, pretty much on demand water heater and it is set at like 105 degrees or something like that. So because I have it he to heat the floor up in here because we in the winter time we'll put calves right there uh, just for a couple hours so they dry and then we'll put them out there. But so I'm just going to kind of use the same thing for a uh, different project. So what I got here is I pretty much have everything that I need. Uh, I already put this together because I had to bring the crimper back. Uh, so I got a couple hoses that are gonna get screwed onto here. I got some flexible copper pipe right there uh, that is gonna go into that bucket. And it's pretty much just gonna constantly run hot water through the tubing which will just in return heat that water up and always keep it at 100 degrees so when they bring in a couple bottles they can just place it in the pail uh, and then whenever we get to it if it might sit there for a little while just so it warms up and after that we will just take it out and I even got something to flush out the water on the bottom, I'll throw that in too because milk will get in there and whatnot. So, oh, we're gonna get to it. So, got a piece of plywood. Pretty sure it's. Well, it's not cut perfect yet. But... I mean, we we'll just have to hold this pail. So, right, it doesn't look bad. So we'll just stick this there. I just gotta put a board on the bottom just to keep it so it doesn't drop down. I have a bucket here. Uh, the coil, this right here, we do gotta get inside of here. So we, we actually gotta make the, the rings a little tighter and then kinda set them down and kind of work our way up just along the whole outside and that way the bottles can fit right in the inner, inside and then I got two compression fittings uh, one for each side I might have to cut one of these pipes a little bit if it's too long and then I got the other pieces that I need um, to finish that up so we'll see if we can get that together I use I wanted to use this and not uh, PEX pipe just because I thought it might be easier to get it to stay on the outside of the pail and also um, the heat transfer probably be a bit better uh, with copper pipe and water than just PEX pipe. Got it all coiled in there. Got them sticking out. Now I just gotta, gotta get a cutter, cut these and put the pressure fittings on. Just like that, connect it to that pipe. And then fill it with water. Dreas has showed up. I don't think he's partaking in this project. No. So, finish it up. 
the only thing I'm really worried about is if I got the right connectors because the connectors that came that are on there came with that system and hopefully what I bought at the hardware store will work as well so everything else I'm not worried about So you see, this got to be opposite. Uh, you got to go a little bit more, and then we're good. There. That's gonna go right there. And then the other one's gonna go there, and then we can just connect it all together. So uh, now that we got all that. Uh, next thing we gotta do is take those two plugs off. Uh, it's just two diaphragms. So one of them is the warm. So this right here is the warm water. And then everything runs through and then the cold water comes back. It runs up through this pump. And there's two heaters, just little heaters in here that, uh, that runs right back around. So there's two different switches. You got one in here. You can hear the pump turn off. And then you got one that runs the circulator pump and one that runs the hot water heater itself. So we got both those off. So now, I've honestly never had this open, so we're gonna lose our pressure. So I guess I can probably just open this up. Uh, did I have to this too much? Baby, look at that. My niece just showed up. What are you doing? I said, What are you doing? And that's not, I, I didn't ask you how you were doing. I said, What are you doing? You're in the calf barn. Yeah. You're here to help? No. You're not here to help? Yeah. You are? What are you doing? We're making something. What is it? Uh, we're making something to keep the milk warm. In the buck, in the pail, oh no, in the bottles, right? Yeah. You gonna help me? Yeah. You're not. You're gonna watch. Yeah. Okay. You want want to, you want to sit down? Yeah. Are you gonna stand? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Uh, she got another bucket. Uh, because we gotta put all that back in there once we lose. Once we lose it. This is pretty, this is just antifreeze though. So, I mean, we, I've never had it off, so this has always been running. Uh. Okay, so. Okay, so I bought these. They have a swivel on them. So now I can just, and there's a little piece of rubber gasket that goes technically on the inside, which is what seals it up. The only thing I didn't know if like the threads were gonna be the same or not, but no, oh, looks like it looks like I got lucky. And it is, so I'll be able to finish this project up. Look at that. To tighten it up. Okay. It's just plastic, so I don't want to over tighten it. Now I'm just gonna screw it all to the wall after that way it's out of the way. So, so now, next step is uh, repressurizing the whole system. You know, if I would have been smart, I would have. I guess it wouldn't have mattered, but um, just gotta make sure that there's no air back in the system. So we'll do that with this right here. Uh, there's a couple hoses that you just keep pumping it. Uh, to get it 
get all the air out. So we'll do that next. So this actually came with this little pump. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn all these off because these technically shouldn't really have air in the lines. Uh, so that way everything will just get pushed through one. All right, so I, cl I close this one, open this one, that way the pump pumps the water in, and this hose right here, um, it pump, uh, any, any air will come back out, and then when there's only water coming out, then we will close this one up here, and we'll pressurize the system with the pump. So that's what we're gonna do now, right? Uh, so you have to keep that drill there for a couple of days? No, nope, just for a little bit. You'll see the air coming out. Or the water coming out after. Oh, I you can't look up. You can kind of see the air bubbles in there. If you come really close, you can see the air bubbles. Oh, whoa, watch it, hold it. So we already got... Whoa! I don't want to touch that. So, we're just gonna make sure there's still air bubbles coming in there. So. Why? That's just air in there. Huh. Yeah. I can already smell it. You can smell it too, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, this one. Oh, darn it. I don't want to do that. I wish I had a third arm. Uh, there we go. Mark is just holding it for me. No, turn it There's no more. Oh. I can't see that thing wrong. All right, so uh, while well, you guys didn't see that, but I did close this valve as well. Oh, this, uh, I closed this valve so none of the water would come back out. And if you look, we pressurized the whole system to 10 PSI. So now this is all full of water as well. And we'll be able to open oh, these off. back up. Is it? I, the camera's not on in black. Oh no, it's on. So now, technically, I can turn all this back on. Uh, obviously, the water temperature dropped because we uh, messed with everything. But you can, but you can see. Yeah, you hear it. You can hear it circulating again. All right. So I put a, a little shutoff valve on the bottom of the pail, just so. Uh, if we get any milk in the water, we can just drain it real quick. So one of the last things I got to do now is uh, I'm just going to strap this to the uh, to the wall and then just do the same thing right there and then put water in it. And that's pretty much all. Oh, I do. I do want to get a block for the bottom to kind of raise it up so the pails don't or the bottles don't get into the water. That way it kind of sticks out. And besides that, I'll be done. All right, last thing. Pour some water in there, Mike. Yeah, obviously those are gonna float. Till there's milk in there, but you know. So. There we go. So, that's it. All right, so we were almost done. Uh, I made one mistake. For some reason, I didn't think that wood doesn't float in water. So obviously when I took the bottles out, it floated up. So I just made, I'm gonna make two holes, I made two holes. I'm gonna zip tie the blocks to the side of the pipes. That way it doesn't float up. That was my bad. All right, so now I'm done. See the wood stain down there? 
Alex is coming in here. Do you approve? Looks good. Yeah. All right. So, one little project done. Water should keep that 100 degrees now. So, now whenever they come in, they can just pop, put the claustrum right in there. Uh, and hopefully that'll make a little difference. Hey, so if you like the video, uh, just like, comment, and subscribe.